<laughs> you look like you've been on a paper round. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you've been on a paper round. I look around and I look down and I laugh and see. As my brown leather satchel hangs to the side of me. And then I look up and there I see this cheeky looking guy who's trying to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, I have actually. I've been delivering the evening standard. Standard, the evening standard. <laughs> Are you having nice drugs tonight? <laughs> that question landed at my feet with a thud because I just wasted all my money on a pocket full of duds but he gives me a side eye and a wry smile and his hand shoots out and there in front of me is a pile of coloured smarties. Not the ones with the tasty crispy shells, the ones they take at parties. <laughs> so I take one and I flip it in the air and I catch it like a peanut and I throw some water down my throat thinking I'm cool as fuck and all that. <laughs> I'm obviously lying, I'm not as cool as that. I spent 10 minutes gagging after about eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> a few hours later with a big grin and wide eyes, my new friend invites me to a party, much to my surprise. We chatted about some silly stuff for hours and hours on end and then I gagged on more recreational drugs with my newfound raver friend. But it was just our luck, we were high as fuck and I said to him, you can be a primary school teacher and he said why not I said because your pupils are too big <laughs> <laughs> and he stops and he smiles at me he says what's your favourite book and I stop and I say so surely without a second look well that's easy it's the melancholy death of Oyster Boy by the genius that is Tim Burton side note before the Burton got all rubbish <laughs> his face turns to a smile I love that book he says so I get ready to recite and clear my throat out to impress and then the genius that is Mr Burton tumbles out of my mouth one day in the park, I had quite a surprise. I met a girl who had many eyes. She was really quite pretty and also quite shocking. I noticed she had a mouth, so we ended up talking. We talked about her flowers and her poetry classes and the problem she'd have if she ever wore glasses. Oh, it's great to know a girl who has so many eyes, but you really get wet when she breaks down and cries. <laughs> Fast forward, 13 years. If this was a movie, there'd be some kind of montage of shit, 80s pop music of sorts. When I look back to where we've been and what we've done and what we've seen, it blows my fucking mind. Nights in, nights out, side splitting, laughing and rolling about, blow up pirate ships with inflatable swords, making up silly songs with lots of silly words, snowball fights on Islington Green with more snow than taken by Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Getting up in the air on cheap airfares and landing down on the ground, what fun to be found. Where would we go next? We didn't really care as long as we were both there. We're peas and pods, we're ridiculous sods. You see, we figured out we're a pair of six-year-old best friends, willing each other into mischief to the very, very end. And there we are, we're three feet tall, with massive dreams, but we're only small. We've got matching duffel coats with chocolate on our faces, with bruises and grazes on our knees and other bony places. You've got broken glasses and I've got frog faces on my wellies. And we both like eating fizzy cola bottles and ice cream and jelly. But in real life, we're not that small. I'm five foot five, you're six feet tall, but we're still the most ridiculous ones of them all. They tell us to grow up and we shout, stay small. <laughs> you may you made me feel mighty, you made me feel brave, you made me believe that I could be the things I crave because you are the silly glasses that I wear, the pirate ships I sail, my laughter, my joy and madness, my hero if I fail and who would have thunk that delivering that daily rag out of that all important handmade brown leather satchel bag would have got us here. So the moral of the story for everyone who's here to listen is that if you ever find yourself in a similar situation my advice to you is this. Deliver the newspapers, take the pills, go to the party and eat your fill, be the new best friend and bring new ones back. Because you never know. You just never know. You might just meet your Batman or your Robin or your Bonnie or your Clyde or your better half or your partner in crime and they might just change your life forever. Disclaimer, there is also a chance you could meet a creepy, creepy weirdo who does absolutely nothing for your life. Well, in fact, your life much worse than that before. In which case, please do not take the advice that I just reported to you. The end. <laughs>